Hey there storytellers, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. Today's topic is going to be reading goals. Now, whether you like to track them on Goodreads or not, or track them at all or not, you probably have at least a few readery goals in mind and I have 10 tips to help you tackle those goals. So without any further ado, let's get into this. someone who likes to keep track of my reading goals. I use Goodreads, the reading challenge for the year. I set my book count goal and hope to hit it and each year I incrementally get closer but I also set it farther away so I never quite have hit the mark just yet but this year is going to be the year. So starting with tip number one, I took my own advice on this one already and that is get or make a reading planner that interests you. If you like to be super creative, you know, DIY, grab a journal and get bullet journaling, get crafty, make like a reading scrapbook, you know, whatever floats your boat in terms of book tracking. But for me, I found the Clockwork Reader reading journal and I just love this minty like sagey green color on the cover and the gold foil the vines it's just so cottage quarry with the like flower and leaf illustrations on the inside it just totally fits the vibe that I go for which is kind of whimsical and I I'm so excited to use this I cannot express to you how much I want to track my reading goals in this plan. Tip number two is enlist a reading buddy or buddies to help encourage you on your goals. They can either buddy read a book with you or they can just cheer you on, you know. I am constantly talking to my friends about books, whether we're all reading the same thing or not. So we're always kind of like, what are you guys reading? What you up to? What you loving about it? What don't you love about it? And it's a great way to find out about books you didn't know about as well as kind of just hype each other up like, yeah, you're reading, how awesome for you, because that's what we do. Three is a slight variation on a common tip, which is join a book club. My extension is join a book club that reads genres that interest you. There's a book club that goes on at my local library, and they don't read books that interest me. I've kind of kept look at the books that they go through and they just they wouldn't do it for me so then I wouldn't be excited to participate so take a little extra time to suss out a reading group that reads the books that you like to read and talk about or read at least a genre you'd be interested in reading more of not just whatever. Tip number four is break your reading goal into smaller parts and reread your and reward yourself for each benchmark that you make along the way. For example, if your goal is to read 100 books this year, you can break it up in every few months you need to have read 25 books or even smaller. You can go, okay, this is X amount of books per month or per week. And at the end of each benchmark period, week, month, longer, whatever you want to go for, give yourself a little reward. And it can be another book, you know, that would be the motivator for me, but also I do that anyway, you know, so buying books has never really been a good reward because I just do it anyway. So I would have to find something different, but you know, buy yourself your favorite snack or take yourself to go see a movie or, you know, go to a restaurant that's a little bit fancy that you don't always go to, you know, just give yourself something that just that feels special. It doesn't have to be expensive, but just something to reward you for doing something that I, I know if you're here and you're watching this video, you love books. So it seems weird to reward yourself for doing something you love, but so many of us don't make enough time to do things we love that I think you're allowed to reward yourself for that. Tip number five is schedule regular reading breaks or regular reading periods. For example, you could say I'm going to read before bed or in the morning, but I think you should also regularly take breaks. You know, if you are somebody who likes to read a lot of really big heavy fantasy books, maybe either read something different or you know depending on how you define break if a break is a break from your usual genre then great break it up that way but for me I mean like take an actual break and sometimes you know going into a book it's going to crush you right it's going to emotionally destroy you for better or worse and I think it's okay to be like I'm going to read this book and I know it's going to destroy me and it's okay to be like I'm gonna take 
a few days, a week, whatever, to have my book hangover and like let it get out of my system a little bit. And sometimes there's a you know, a grieving process with that. You you read similar books to help get you out of it or, you know, to keep the feeling alive. It's all part of the process. But I think scheduling times to read and scheduling times to not read just to give your brain a break can really help reset the sort of reading drive. Tip number six is keep things interesting with a variety of different books. This can be ones you're reading at the same time or you know just okay I've read a fantasy now I'm gonna read a contemporary now I'm gonna read a memoir now I'm gonna read some poetry you know jumping from different things to keep it interesting rather than reading different things at the same time to keep it interesting that might be overwhelming so allow yourself to just mix things up a little bit I think that really helps just sort of jog your brain back into like oh that's what I want to be doing. Tip number seven is account for the busy stretches in your life when possible and don't take on too much. This kind of feeds back into schedule reading breaks. If you know the holiday season is going to be a really busy, chaotic, stressful time for you, maybe say, you know what, I'm not going to try to get a bulk of my reading done at the end of the year. I'm going to pick a couple books that I know I'm going to crave and love and want to be reading and that'll make reading during that stressful time a little bit easier rather than saying I I need to read 10 more books by the end of the year you know I think giving yourself permission to not read during a busy stretch or read less during a busy stretch is okay. Tip number eight is if or when it's feasible try to take a day off to do nothing but read and do bookish things. You know often a lot of us are trying to cram reading and bookish things into our daily lives which are often packed with work or school or just life commitments that we have to make time for and we don't spend as much time reading as we want to or we do spend a bunch of time reading to the detriment of our health you know those of us who stay up super late to read a book when we're really into it you know what I mean but I think when possible giving yourself a whole day to do nothing but read or you know watch bookish adaptations or take yourself to a bookstore or to buy bookish merch, you know, whatever floats your boat, just take the whole day to do that. Do nothing else. Make sure that you, anything you feel compulsive, the like, need to take care of when you have a day off, anything that gets in your brain like, oh, I should have done that, try to write it that down ahead of time and get it done so that when you have that day off, you can just focus entirely on bookish things. Or maybe it's one of your days off and you need to take that break from bookish things. But I think having a day off just to like really let your reader soul take over, it's so needed sometimes. Tip number nine is have a list of reading prompts or a TBR jar for when you get stuck trying to think of what to read next. Sometimes you aren't sure what you're in the mood for and you just need something you want to be reading, you're craving it, you just don't know what the next good story should be. And I think having a prompt would be the best one for me personally, because I know if I would pull a book out of a TBR jar, I've tried it, and immediately I have a gut reaction of like, I want to read this or I don't. So I think having a list of prompts, anything to kind of jog, oh, that's an interesting book, would be really helpful especially if you kind of get them ready ahead of time and maybe make a couple like different suggestions that would answer that prompt. And I think if you're a mood reader like me, when you're going through them, one of those will immediately hit that gut feeling of like, that's it, that's the one. And it can help keep you from hitting a reading slump. And tip number 10 is read whatever calls to you without guilt. Don't worry about what other people are reading. Don't worry about how much they've read. Don't worry about what you know if you're going to be judged don't judge yourself don't think about how many books you should have read by now based on your goal just go with what your heart desires don't even worry about if you've started another book you can always go back right start the one that's calling to you because that's the one your reader brain wants to read so just read it you can always go back to the other book when you're done which is this is the one I probably struggle with the most is I hesitate to start something because I've already started something else and I delay it. I'm like, oh, well, I've already started that, so I should finish it first, which I think a lot of us do. So just to be guilt free about your reading this year. Do not, to the best of your ability, because I know it's easier said than done, compare yourself to anyone else, including yourself. But that is it for 10 tips for crushing your reading goals this year and 
any year to come. I think these tips are applicable whenever. So I'm going to get going. If you want to keep up with me and all of my bookish adventures, you can go ahead and click the subscribe button. And of course, I highly recommend that you ring the little bell because it notifies you every time I post a new video. And now that I'm posting twice a week, it's important to have it on because you don't want to miss anything. But before I go, do you guys have any reading tips that you think will help people crush their goals for the new year? If so, let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye!